You know, after all the overanalyzing, lately I've actually found it more fun to approach things more positively and actually think about the ways in which fantasy concepts and designs can be surprisingly functional or make sense in their own right, etc. However, today is a rant day. I just feel like venting about a pet peeve. Uh, first off, the obligatory disclaimers. Yes, I know it's just fantasy. No, it doesn't need to be realistic. Yes, I actually do like fantasy. No, I'm not trying to dictate what game designers should do. Yes, a game can be perfectly enjoyable in spite of silly pet peeve tropes. Are we on the same page? For this, I'm going to use Genshin Impact as an example, because not only is it particularly guilty of what I'm about to rant over, but there's also some great footage of the different styles in action. So, um, this right here. Pet peeve. Petite young girls in maid or schoolgirl outfits swinging gigantic swords. This is very guilty of that. You know, this in and of itself doesn't have to be a problem, because again, it's fantasy, so whatever, the fact that she clearly doesn't have the build to use it, it's probably magic, they're probably all enhanced, and uh, to be fair, all of the characters in this game are built like that. They're basically all malnourished kids, so there's some kind of, you know, superhero stuff or magic or whatever going on. Okay, all fine and good, but they still can't use them properly. That's my problem, when characters canonically can't fight because the weapon is too heavy for them. I mean, look at this animation. How is this tiny prepubescent boy supposed to handle this freaking sword? Clearly he can't. <laughs> this is not how you fight. The thing drags him around, he th it throws him off balance, his frickin' feet leave the ground. In fact, both of them. He's literally hovering in the air because the thing just plays with him, basically. Like, the sword wields him, not the other way around. What the hell? It's pretty bad here, too, but at least she's not completely dragged off her feet. Uh, you can tell that it's the thing is too heavy for her, and this is a, one hell of a telegraphed swing that anyone would be able to evade or otherwise respond to in combat, but for the love of f fluff, stop hitting the ground with a sword, okay? I can accept it if it's like a giant hammer or whatever, something that's sturdy enough and doesn't have an edge. If you slam it on the ground, okay, I might actually cover that in another video, but th this is a sword, it's got an edge. And edges are kind of fragile, that's sort of the point. They concentrate a lot of force on a small surface, which also means that they don't have much mass to resist deformation or breakage, you know? I get it, giant swords are cool. Everybody likes giant swords. If you want to fight with a giant sword, then you better have the strength for it and know how to use it. This is not how! Stop spinning! Wide sweeping cuts and circular movement and some turns are perfectly fine with a large two-handed sword. Nothing wrong with that. It's even in the historical manuscripts. This is how you defend against multiple attackers. So it is fine to do some spins. You know, this is actually a pretty decent example. She clearly knows how to use a sword, which is kind of funny. Yes, she also commits the cardinal sin of slamming a sharp blade into the ground, but she clearly knows how to use a sword, aside from slamming the ground. I mean, sort of. It depends on the particular animation set. So not this, but that. That is actually perfectly fine. Um, even the spin at the end, I mean, yeah, it is overcommitted. Uh, you know, it's the kind of thing where you, you put more power into it than you can handle with your strength and body weight, so you end up spinning around. But in her case, it's deliberate and she actually ends up in a guard position. Granted, one that's so far retracted that it's not as much of a guard, but, you know, there, there are guards where you have the, the sword behind you uh, that you use at certain distances. You know, there's a way to keep the momentum going, particularly this right here. Yeah, one swing, smoothly transition into the other. That's all good. This is kind of in the middle. 
Like there's definitely some good ones, you know, like the uh, the rising cots. Yeah, pretty good. This, like you can see how he's off balance right there, and then he struggles to swing it with one hand. Why would you? If you can't handle it, don't do it, okay? If you don't have the strength to swing a two-handed sword with one hand, there's a pro tip for you. Don't do it. I do like that they have personalized styles, though, because usually in games, the animation set is dependent on the weapon. So they could have easily done just one set of animations per weapon, which every character uses, and that's it. But there are very noticeable differences, which is nice. Um, she has a pretty odd style here. In terms of animation, by the way, you know, just how to make animations look good, absolutely no problem here. I, I would never criticize this in terms of animation quality, because there are certain rules that you follow to make something visually interesting and, and all that. This is all there. You know, you've got the, the anticipatory movements you know, right here. It makes it clear uh, you know, what's going on to the observer and uh, it looks spectacular you know the way they strike poses it's very dynamic it's also super overexposed and this is the point where you die <laughs> if you're fighting an, a competent opponent they're just waiting for you to overcommit like that and then they get you when you're just a sitting duck this on the other hand i mean okay i'll try to be nice all right if you have such a large sword, possibly magical too, um, who wants to move in on that? You know, particularly with this effect, it looks like it's literally a circle of death. At the same time, it is so predictable. If you stand in front of her and you just step back to evade the cut right here, and then you immediately step back in, you've got all this time to attack her and stop what she's doing. You know, this... It may not seem like much, because it's basically, I don't know, half a second, but in a fight against a competent opponent, that's enough. That's enough to get wrecked. And this is really more of a form or flourish. Uh, you see that a lot in Asian martial arts that are stylized. You know, which they, they still have the original combat techniques in them, but they are woven into flowing forms that exercise physical fitness and train balance and coordination, etc., etc. But that's not how you actually fight. You know, so uh, yeah, this is. I don't have words for how stupid this is. Boom! Oh, I can't handle it! I can't handle it! Now it's stuck in the ground! Ah! Somebody! Somebody put me out of my misery. They have a lot of health points, you know. The dynamic is a little bit different. If you actually have a pool of health points that is, you know, gradually drained, as opposed to, oh no, I was caught, I'm going to bleed out right now. Um, yeah, uh, you can get away with some more things, for sure, uh, if you're that tanky. But um, still, why? Why are characters fighting that clearly can't fight? Like that canonically can fight. I say canonically, even though I doubt that it's part of the character description or that other characters trash them for being incompetent, but these animations suggest that it's too much for them. They can't actually handle it. So, uh, yeah. This? This is fine. It's magic. Yeah, okay. <laughs> With magic, you can do whatever the hell, and uh, he's not actually doing anything. The, you know, the, the magic... Wolf Spirit does it. And yes, somebody also pointed this out. This is the top rated comment. You can see the difference between who actually is capable of wielding a sword like this and who's just being an edgy poser, basically. The thing is, even though I don't find acrobatic tricks sensical in a sword fight, at least it shows you that they're competent. You know, they're trained, they're skilled. They're not just some random person who picked up a gigantic sword because they're like, whoa, this is so cool, I'm gonna swing this. I'm gonna get killed because I have no idea what I'm doing. And these people really need magical swords. The way they abuse them, <laughs> you just stick them in the ground and strike the ground and yeah, um, they, they have to be magical, which I'm assuming they are. If they're indestructible, then 
basically ignore everything I say about hitting the ground. Because um, if, if that is not a problem, if the weapon is indestructible, then hitting the ground isn't even necessarily a bad thing because it allows you to, it, it stops the momentum for you. You don't have to do that with muscle power. The ground does it for you. So yeah, that's, that's all I've got. Just wanted to rant about that. <laughs> Hope you found it entertaining. Thanks for watching and have a good one, folks.